Read and fully understand the operating manual before using the trench burner. Failure to follow instructions could result in injury or death. The manual is shipped inside the toolbox, and it is also available online free of charge at airburners.com. Always wear suitable personal protective equipment. Position the back of the trench burner, about 20 feet from where you plan to dig your trench. Trench should be 30 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 8 to 10 feet deep. Chalk the trench burner wheels. Unhitch the trench burner. Level the trailer with jack stands. Remove the safety bolt at the front of the carrier pipe. Keep the bolt, nut, and cotter pin handy, as you'll need them later. Unhook the strap from the winch assembly. Pull out the manifold assembly by hand from the back of the trench burner until it hits the stop. At this point, the black line and arrow on top should line up with the edge of the cowling. Swing out the manifold sections, first the left, then the right. Use the safety bolt and nut to temporarily secure the manifold in place. Using the manifold as a guide, mark the long edges of your pit with stakes. Swing the manifold sections back to the travel mode. Using the winch, pull the manifold assembly back in, approximately halfway. Build your trench, remembering that the walls must be vertical. Keep the dirt nearby to use at the end of the day. Remove the stakes and set up safety tape or cone barriers to help protect personnel from falling into the pit. On the loading side of the pit, place a solid barrier like a heavy tree trunk to prevent the loader from being accidentally driven into the pit. With manifold sections in travel position, push not pull the assembly out completely by hand. Be careful not to fall into the pit. Deploy the manifold sections again and secure them with the bolt, nut, and cotter pin. Evenly lower the rear jack stands until the manifold sections rest on the ground at the edge of the pit without hanging over it. The front jack stand will be raised off the ground after adjusting the rear stands. Assure that the cowling is locked and secured, and the clutch, or PTO if so equipped, is disengaged with the lever in the down position. Start the engine with the key switch and let it idle to warm up 5 to 10 minutes. Use preheat if needed. To check the diesel fuel level, push the first button in the lower left on the digital control panel with the engine running. The fuel level in percentage will appear on the lower right of the screen. Start loading the pit. Place fines, like dry brush, at the bottom with heavier material on top until the pit is about three quarters full. Pour diesel fuel evenly on the wood waste. Never use gasoline or other highly explosive accelerants. Severe injury or death may occur. Carefully light the diesel fuel with a long makeshift torch or other suitable tool. Once strong flames build throughout the length of the pit, for machines with manual clutches, engage the air fan by slowly engaging the clutch lever to the up position until it locks into place. Engaging the clutch too fast or at higher RPM may cause the air fan drive belts to jump the drive pulleys. Increase the RPM from idle by pushing the throttle up button, which is the first button from the right. Be sure to level off the RPM at each step. RPM set points have been pre-programmed. They are idle at 900 RPM, cool down at 1700 RPM, low operating at 2200 RPM, and high operating at 2400 RPM. The diesel engine is an EPA Tier 4 final certified computer controlled engine. Do not attempt to reprogram the electric control module or ECM. Once you have a stable fire, increase the RPM to high operating, the maximum. Visible smoke begins to reduce as the fire heats up, but you may still see small puffs of smoke as you're loading when the waste momentarily breaks the air curtain. Be prepared to load the pit with wood waste and continue loading. The best way is to load in frequent small batches. 
When loading root balls, it helps to shake out the rocks and dirt. Guard against spot fires in the area around the pit by making sure it's clean of burnable materials and never leave a burning pit unattended. Always be prepared to shut the fire down due to weather shifts like strong winds or other emergencies. Approximately one hour before the end of your work shift, stop loading the pit and let the fire die down. Reduce the RPM to idle by pressing the throttle down button, which is the second button from the right. First to low operating, then to cool down, and finally to idle, again leveling off the RPM at each set point. With the engine RPM strictly and positively in idle, disengage the manual clutch by pushing down on the lever. Be warned, disengaging the air fan with the clutch abruptly at higher RPM or turning off the engine with the key switch or throttle down button while the clutch is still engaged may cause the air fan drive belts to jump the drive pulleys, which may cause damage to the drive system. Shut down the engine by turning the key switch to the off position. Before leaving the work site, fully cover ashes and embers with dirt to extinguish them and fill the trench with your excavated dirt. Now, return the trench burner to travel mode. Make sure the manifold has cooled down. Remove the safety pin and fold the sections back into travel position. Release the winch ratchet lever so you can pull out the winch strap and attach it to the front of the carrier pipe. Level the trailer with the jack stands. Winch the manifold assembly back into the machine. Attach the manifold assembly to the front of the machine with the safety bolt, nut, and cotter pin. Make sure this is done correctly and securely to prevent the assembly from accidentally deploying while on the road. Hitch the trench burner to your truck and remove the trench burner wheel chocks. Remove the rear jack stands and stow them in the toolbox. Next, lock the cowling with the key and make sure the rubber safety hold down latches are properly in place and not worn. Connect the electrical pigtail, breakaway system and safety chains. Check your lights, tires and electric brakes and breakaway system battery and place the front jack stand in travel position. And you're ready to roll on to the next job. If you have any additional questions, please call our service department at 772-220-7303 or email us at customerservice at airburners.com.